Welcome aboard Just Jets with your captain, Matt O'Leary. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Hello and welcome to Just Jets episode number 107. What's going on? I am Matt O'Leary, going to be hanging out with you for the next little bit here. We're going to break down a few things on today's episode. First and foremost, I feel like we should do some heavy coverage of the NFL draft combine because, well, why the heck not? It was uh, it was a huge thing from this past week. We learned a lot, so we're going to start off there. We're going to do your voicemails as always. But before all of that, a message from our sponsors over at Manscaped. Can I get a round of applause, please, everyone? Today, I'm excited to announce that Manscaped is launching their Ultra Premium Collection. Believe it or not, it's for your not-so-private parts. I'm talking about a leveled-up hygiene routine with your favorite manly scent. This is all an all-in-one skin and hair care kit for the everyday man and covers you from head to toe. Literally, Manscaped is covering you from head to toe. Is trusted below the waist. Now, trust them with the rest. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with my code Jets20. That is J-E-T-S-2-0. Jets20 for 20% off and free shipping. Make sure to get yourself something nice. Well... A big, busy week for, well, all of us here at the, who are Jet fans, because it's the combine, it's our favorite time of the year, and why wouldn't it be? Because there's so much to discuss, so much to discuss. The draft is coming up in April, obviously the combine's a huge part of that, free agency is coming up next week, Woo! It's going to be a busy, busy time for us here on the Matt O'Leary NY channel. So let's hop into it with some of my favorite storylines, some overreaction, and just some overall takes. First and foremost, earliest in the week, we saw the wide receivers go. And Traylon Burks didn't have a great combine. Just flat out didn't. But there, the, the overreaction, I think, is a little bit much of whether it was the 40 yard dash and sure there were some other things outside of the 40 yard dash that he did not perform well uh, or that he underperformed in but I can't just throw out everything we watched on tape of this guy because of this combine performance I'm not willing to do that a lot of people are they're saying oh my god you go, second round you can't take him in the first round that's crazy that that is crazy town now if your takeaway is hey I think the Jets should really go with Garrett Wilson instead. Okay. That's a different conversation. Be like, hey, you know, Garrett Wilson seems a little bit safer to me. I'd rather take him than Traylon Burks. Okay. I could live with that. But to be like, oh, yeah, Traylon Burks is off my draft board now after a really bad combine, which I don't think was really bad. I just, I, I think he was underwhelmed. Underwhelming and bad are two different things. And I mean, listen, it wasn't great, but my, my biggest takeaway is this, like, why, why are you holding what someone's doing in shorts and a t-shirt to such this high standard? It's a tool. It's absolutely a tool that you use to help evaluate as well as tape. I think you need a, a good mix of both. And maybe it's just recency bias because of, well, this is what what have you done for me lately? And this is what we've the most recent thing that we've seen. But it, it's just a little bit much. I, I'm sorry if that's not your takeaway. And if you're on the train of Traylon Burks is you can't possibly draft him. I, I don't know how you can get to that point. But if you say, all right, I'd rather you draft Garrett Wilson at 10. Fine. OK. All right. You can tell me on that. But to completely just take him out of the first round, I, I don't possibly see but that that's the first thing the second thing is sauce Gardner, ahmad Gardner's stock way up to the moon it's going uh he had a really good really really good a combine but i mean he had phenomenal tape to begin with uh my favorite corner from this draft class um while Derek stingley i think does have a high ceiling he also ha- is a major, major, major risk because of the injuries over the last couple of years. Sauce is more of a sure thing to me. And while I don't think I'm at the point where I would take him at four, maybe, maybe I would, maybe that's going to end up changing for me. But 
the, we're starting to live in a world where I can get behind taking Sauce Gardner in the first round, which just a few weeks ago wasn't really the case for me because of all the other you know, ways that you can go. There's, I've said it multiple times. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And with this draft and free agency process, there's multiple ways that Joe Douglas can go about building this roster. But let's say, for example, the Jets sign a guard in free agency. Okay. So you don't have to worry about, you know, potentially taking Iki Aquanu and moving him inside. You're not going to do that if you sign like a starting caliber guard like you know whichever one you want pick one out of a hat doesn't matter which one we choose in this spot um and let's say they use uh a second round one of their second rounders to either trade for a wide receiver or uh you sign amari cooper in free agency or alan robinson which alan robinson scares me a little bit that's a conversation for another day but the, the point is you don't necessarily you're not in a position where you're taking a wide receiver at 10 all right and Sauce Gardner is good. Yes, he he's really good. Now, th there absolutely is a world where he's the pick. I don't know if I how likely I'm going to you know put it on that that it's going to be the Jets pick, um, at ten because I don't know if he gets there. I think you can make a case that he goes to the Falcons to pair with uh, was it AJ Terrell is the other corner over there, right? Um. I don't know if he makes it that far. And as I said, Stingley's a little bit of a risk. Um, and I don't think I'm taking him at four because there's really, I, I think Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be there at four. And I think the Jets would take him over Sauce. I would, it would be very difficult for me to say, oh, there's this guy right here who was the consensus first overall pick for a majority of the year. And then in the last month, that, had, that wasn't the case. Let's say it's Evan, Evan Neal goes first, Aiden Hutchinson two, and then three, maybe Kyle Hamilton goes third. Some, something like that. Or maybe they go offensive line and Ike McQuano goes. Or just any anybody else but KT. Which is kind of my next point that I wanted to get into in this draft process here was I thought Kayvon Thibodeau was fine this week. I didn't see any issues. I actually liked his answers a whole lot. I thought he... You know, he showed how much of a film junkie he is and how hard he's working and stuff like that. I really thought a lot of these narratives were BS to begin with, you know, with uh, Kayvon. But I think he, he proved the doubters wrong. That's how I interpreted it. Now, I know a lot of people interpreted it the other way, which is fine. I, I don't look at him and say, this is a me guy. I look at him and say, this is someone who is striving to get better. Maybe he's confident. See, that's where it's you have to draw the line. Is it on the confidence side or the cocky side? I fall on the confidence side with him. And there is a line, and everyone's line is different. So, like, I get it, but I don't know why you'd be so quick to give up on someone with that amount of talent. Um, and I just the thought of Thibodeau on one side. And Carl Lawson on the other with Quinton Williams and John Franklin Myers in the middle and Sheldon Rankins coming in and Bryce Hoff rotating in and different stuff like that. That is, that's really good. And I've said this all along, but I do in my heart believe that the Jets will prioritize the defensive line before they would the secondary. Now that doesn't mean like maybe there's a world where Thibodeau and Thibodeau's your pick at four and then at pick 10, you end up going with Sauce Gardner if he's there. But if it came down to on draft day that Kayvon is available and Sauce is available, I have a hard time believing that Joe Douglas and uh, Robert Sala and Ulbrick are going to go on the side of the corner. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do that. And like Sauce is, he's really growing on me. The more and more I watch of him, the more and more I look into him and he has a good combat, like everything, his stock is rising and for a good reason. But if it came down to those two, I don't know how you don't take the swing on the elite level pass rush. I don't, unless again, there's so many variables here, unless they fix that in free agency. Supposedly Zadarius Smith is going to get cut by the, the, the green Bay Packers. 
I know he didn't play much. He was hurt last year, but this is a guy who in his sleep could give you nine plus sacks. Yeah, he's a veteran, but I, I, he's someone the Jets should have probably tried to sign a few years ago when they went and tried to sign Anthony Barr and convert him to an edge rusher, which is just stupid. And then the last thing I want to get into, and there's so much that we can talk about in the combine. They, they, I could do an hour on the combine, but I don't want to do that. I want to get to your voicemails and talk about, you know, talk about the Jets with you guys. That's the whole point of this show. The safety position. So, I mean, let's start here, actually, because it's there's confusion. Kyle Hamilton's really good. He's going to go in the top 10, maybe the top three. I would think I I think there's a good chance that Houston takes him at three. But even if not, he's not making it past worst case scenario, the Atlanta Falcons at eight. Worst case scenario for him. The value of this safety class is really, really good. There are three or f- maybe even four safeties that you can take in the second round. And the Jets have two picks at the top of the second round. And sure, like I am not remotely saying that they are the same prospect as Kyle Hamilton is. But with Lewis seen phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal combine, which was expected to an extent, but I mean, Georgia defense was great all year. His tape was good. He's a hard hitter, all that stuff. Daxton Hill, Jaquan Brisker, even Jalen Petrie, who's maybe someone who some people are thinking maybe third round, but I think he goes in the second. Would it be a top 40 pick? I don't know if I'd go that far, but you're telling me that one of seen Hill or Brisker won't be available for the Jets at 35 or 38. I don't buy that. And with, I I mean, we just talked about it. Would you rather go KT or Kyle Hamilton? Would you rather go Sauce Gardner or Kyle Hamilton? I can tell you where I fall. You guys probably know where I fall on on the stand here. But the, I just think the value in round two is so good at this position where I can't possibly sit here and say, oh, yeah, I watched what Lewisine did on tape at Georgia all year long. And then I watched the combine he had. But I absolutely have to take the guy who's, you know, at four and potentially wait on one of these edge rushers who aren't guaranteed to be there? Like, think of how many good first-round edge rushers are going to be available. Uh, Potentially Thibodeau. Aiden Hutchinson is going to be off the board. I think uh, Thibodeau has a chance to be there. But even beyond that, uh, Jermaine Johnson, uh, George Karloftis, uh, there's a, a laundry list of guys who's going to you know be be available at, at, at that point in the, in the first round. It all comes down to this. Would you rather take your swing on that or would you rather take your swing on the safety? And the argument or the pushback that I always, always get is why would you take edge three over safety one? Well, value. Value. That's why. And I just like, I was never going to be on the Hamilton train to begin with, but especially after this weekend or this past week, where we see all these safeties shine and all these guys you can get on day two shine, I can't possibly wrap my head around the idea of doing it. And look, it's going to be the same people who've always agreed with me are going to agree with me, the same people who've always said that that you're crazy, you have to take him, he's the best player in this draft. I'm not changing your mind, you're not changing my mind. It's just, it's how it is. But I was really impressed with some of these guys who, you know, are more than likely not going in the first round. I don't know. I would much rather I would rather sign a veteran safety and potentially pair them with one of these three or four guys that I just list, listed off. So we're going to get into your voicemails now in a second. But I wanted to talk to you about the game that I've been playing versus I love that app. So it's, it's a ton of fun if you haven't checked it out. Uh, so essentially, like you could play these games and answer if someone's asking a question. And you answer mine is a yeah, is simple. Yes or no. I like to keep it simple. But there's sports. There's politics there's pop culture uh and i've been doing new york sports so i'm doing basketball this week so my question is a brooklyn nets question will kevin durant score more than 30 points in thursday's game against the philadelphia 76ers click the link down below in order to play and follow me there uh as again we're doing more new york sports questions and you could win some money but KD scored over 30 points in his last two games since coming back so Can he make it three with this game? They probably play before Thursday, I would imagine, but 
Will he be able to do it against the 76ers? That's my question. So let's get into those voicemails. Let's do it. First one is from Matt in New Jersey. Wants to talk about Calvin Ridley. Okay, let's do it. Let's talk some Calvin Ridley. Hi, this is Max uh, Pullman, New Jersey. I'll oh, Max, about, I'm sorry. Uh, free agency. So free agency is going to happen in the week, and I think that the Jets should sign Calvin Ridley. We don't have a really true number one wide receiver, and Calvin Ridley is an elite receiver. He's very good and can make Zach Wilson a good quarterback. What's your thoughts on go Jets? <laughs> um, well, you have to trade for him. He's not going to be available but to, to sign. He's still under contract with the Atlanta, but um, there's a little bit of risk involved in trading for a guy like Calvin Ridley. I think it's worth it because um, when he's there, I mean, last time we saw him a full season, he put up 1,300 yards. Like that, To just poo-poo that, I think, would be a massive mistake. Um, I see the side of people who say, I oh, sign Allen Robinson or... Um, Oh my God, who the who the hell did uh, Amari Cooper? Um, I see the side of uh, just draft Garrett Wilson at ten, or Traylon Burks, or Drake London, whoever you like, sure. Um, but I'm not opposed to potentially giving up a draft pick for Calvin Ridley. Is it my 100% preferred plan? Probably not. But am I opposed? Not exactly. But you'd have to trade for him. You can't sign him. Kevin from Buffalo. Ooh, a pick swap. We're gonna do some NFL draft conversation. Hell yeah, man. Let's do it. Hey, what's going on, Matt? My name is Kevin. I live in Buffalo, New York as a Jets fan, so my life sucks. <laughs> I got a good question for you, though. Lots of trade uh, suggestions around wide receivers. Amari Cooper, Brandon Cooks, Calvin Ridley all come with their own baggage and some pretty substantial cap hits. I have a trade suggestion for you that would allow the Jets to get a young, up-and-coming receiver while uh, keeping the cap, the cap hit not too big and uh, retaining some premium draft capital. We all know the Pittsburgh Steelers may want to leapfrog Washington to come up and draft a quarterback. But what if the Jets swap number 10 with number 20 for Pittsburgh and the price for that swap is wide receiver Chase Claypool, 23 years old, solid number two on the outside. Uh, then we could still go O-line or edge at four. And then maybe at 20, we can go with like a Nicobe Dean or one of the second tier corners like a Trent McDuffie. Let me know what you think. Uh, what you think. Uh, thanks for all you do and go Jets. Thank you. This is interesting. Um, I would probably rather the future over Chase Claypool. Um, he's 6'4, 238. He did have 800 yards last year. Okay, he did a little bit better than I thought he did. Obviously, as a rookie, he was much, much better. Um, It's not the worst idea. I, I do see Pittsburgh potentially looking to move up. Because supposedly they really like Malik Willis. That's their guy. and they're, I mean, they're going to need a quarterback. I would assume, though, like, just looking at their roster... I think they would probably want a veteran quarterback. That would be my, my take because they. I think the rest of their roster is pretty close to win now where if you bring in a rookie, I mean, there, there's going to be a learning curve. So I don't know how um, likely you or I don't know how successful, I guess, you could be with a win now roster and a rookie. I, I mean, it could work. The, like Mac Jones looked okay as a, as a rookie with a really good roster around him. Um Trade with Pittsburgh, swap 10 for 20 and chase Claypool. I would probably, I'd rather the future first, I think, because I think you could probably get a, a future first um, with that with that swap. I think you get more, and I'd rather take the future, I think, than, than chase Claypool. Or maybe you just take a wide receiver at 20. Like, there's, like, Chris Olave. That's someone else who had a really good week. Um, maybe Traylon Burks is there for you at 20. Maybe Drake London is. It's all kind of dependent on what these other teams or how these other teams value that position in the draft. But um, I think you can do a little bit better if you're moving back. But Pittsburgh, I think, is a is a pretty good, um, what do you call it? I think is a pretty good potential trade partner for them. We're going to go to Jimmy from Dallas up next. All right, Jim, what do you got, man? Hey, Matt, my name is Jimmy, and I am from Dallas, Texas. Uh, first time calling in. Welcome. 
Uh, don't really have a question for you per se, but I don't, this has never really happened, I don't think, since I've been listening to your channel. But I just moved to Dallas a little bit over a week ago, and I've been seeing that there are some callers coming in from Dallas. And I just wanted to see if uh, any Jets fans out here wanted to, you know, get together for the draft um, and possibly watch some Jets games when the season starts. Yeah, that's kind of just it. If uh, anyone wants to reach out, my Instagram is at Jimmy, J-I-M-M-Y. So we get S E L I G A. Uh, feel free to uh, you know send a friend request or DM me or something, and uh, we'd love to get together, you know, and uh, you know watch some more Jets football and stuff when I'm down here. Uh, thank you so much, man, and uh, really enjoy the content. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah, love it. Um, definitely. Like I know when I was, there are different meetup groups. I, I don't know every single one so if someone knows and could either put it in the comment or reach out to him that would be phenomenal but when i was in uh houston last year i watched the uh the tennessee game which was uh we watched at a bar with the the houston jet fan group i'm sure there pro there's got to be a dallas one there's a ton of these different fan groups so um like i said i'm trying to kind of do it right now on my phone as we're talking here but like i, like I said i know there's one in houston there's probably a Dallas one, but yeah, there's, there's some pretty good, um, fan groups because of, there's a lot of trans, uh, transplants, uh, in Texas who are Jeff fans, which I really didn't know, but, uh, yeah, man, the, the whole experience of going down to Houston and watching at that bar, which really, it was a Jets bar. There were the Dallas Cowboys game was on, but the sound was not on for it. The sound was on for Jets Titans, which is, which I thought was really funny, but, um, yeah, it was a really good time. And if everyone, if anyone's down in Dallas and wants to get together and form a Jets group, if there isn't one, not a bad idea. Next up is Sam. He is calling in from New Jersey. And we're going to do some Sauce Gardner conversation. Okay, this is a popular name coming up now. And, well, for, for a pretty good reason. Hey, Matt. It's Sam from Flemington, New Jersey. Um, what's going on? Uh, last time I called was the Gase era. Last year of the Gase era. I'm sorry um, about that. <laughs> got killed by somebody and was just frustrated with Darnold and Gase and the whole thing. But anyway, um, it's good to be back. Uh, Ahmad Gardner, I got to say, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say it right now. I think, I think he's a must draft. Ooh. Um, at 10, if we don't go receiver, I would be fine with a receiver. At 10, man, I don't know. I'd, I've been watching this guy Gardner, uh, for a while. Um, still going into the season, into the college football season, like six weeks, just looking up the top corners and stuff like that. And I watched Gardner and, you know, he finished out the year strong. Um, so I was wondering, man, um, what are your thoughts on him? Um, do you think the Jets would go anywhere near him? Um, and I guess to bounce off of that, do you buy into all the type that the Jets are just going to go receiver at 10? Because um, that's the thing that I'm seeing pop up a lot, especially on ESPN. Um but mock drafts all over the place too. Um, can't trust ESPN on everything, obviously. But uh, yeah, thanks for fielding my question, and uh, have a great day. Bye. Appreciate it, Sam. Thank you so much for calling in and uh, hanging out with us here on a little bit of a of a Monday show. Love it. Um, so a few things. We'll start with Ahmad Gardner, Sauce Gardner. I really, really like him. A lot. I think it would be uh, wise if the New York Jets did draft him. Uh, they would have to, though, pivot. Like, I, I'm not someone who's like, yeah, draft him at 10 and then like, all right, pick a wide receiver in the second round. And that's going to be our play at the wide receiver position. I think that's a little bit too risky for me. Uh, if you want to sign an Amari Cooper or someone like that, or if you want to use that pick and trade for a more established receiver instead, Okay, that's fair. I think you could sell me on that. But 
he to me is corner one. Like that really is what it comes down to. Um, and if he's there, that's another conversation. We have no idea if he's going to be there for the Jets at 10. I thought for sure he would be. But after this week, does his stock rise so much that he's not? Like, do the Falcons take him at eight? Is there another team that takes him before? Do, would the Giants there take him at seven? Maybe. Maybe they do. I would think the Giants probably go either offensive line, offensive line, or offensive line, defensive line. But would it be crazy for them to take a, a corner? No, especially if they have to move on from Bradbury for cap reasons. I, I like it. I, I wouldn't be upset if the Jets go with him in the draft. Would not. Now, for the wide receiver at 10, I, I think there's some, I think it makes sense. I do, because he's like a, a, a young, it would be a young receiver who you can have come up with Zach, which is exactly like, you know, Elijah Moore, and you already have the veteran in, in Corey Davis there. Um, and to, to me, Traylon Burks or Garrett Wilson, those two guys seem to be like the best fit. Drake London, he scares me a little bit. He does. Um, I'm a little bit lower on him than others. I think it would really be if you're taking a wide receiver at 10, it would be between one of those two guys. And to some people, Garrett Wilson surpassed Traylon Burks or Traylon Burks fell because of his combine. I'm good either way. It, those are my wide receivers one and two. So I'm more than fine with either of those two guys. And I think the moral of the story here is you have to do everything you possibly can to make sure that Zach Wilson's your guy or put Zach in the best possible situation to where he has a chance of succeeding. That's important. It's extremely, extremely important. And I think that's why you see so many mock drafts that have a wide receiver at 10. It's because you got to know. And they need more. Like, I like their wide receiver core. It, it's, it's a good nucleus so far. You have to add to it. Let's assume you bring Braxton Barrios back. Okay, that's one. Then you have uh, Corey Davis is two. Elijah Moore is three. You need another big guy. You need one more guy. And whether you want to do that through free agency, a trade, or the draft, however you want to attack it, I still think it's important to realize that you need one more weapon there. And a tight end, and two tight ends, which probably you want to do one in free agency, one in the draft. Or, I mean, there's a world where you could do two in the draft. If you were, I think it's the draft to do that with how deep it is. But, as I've kind of said before, I think it's important to have a veteran in that room so it's not... You're not relying on two rookies um, to get it done and likely two day two and day three rookies to get the job done in that room. Because earlier in the year, we saw it. We physically saw it. The Jets were running a lot of 12 personnel. But they pivoted because of how bad their tight end play was. It's a West Coast. It's a West Coast style offense. Yes, over the last five years or so, probably, I mean, probably longer. The Jets haven't really utilized a tight end position all that much, but this offensive system is different from what they've been running in, in the Gase era or, you know, before that with uh, Morton or, um, oh my God, Jeremy Bates. I don't know why I was blanking on his name. But Chan Gailey had just always refused to use tight ends. That's my biggest criticism of him, but in a perfect world, that's what they want to use. So that was a really long answer, but hopefully that, that answered it for you, Sam. Uh, we're going to go to Dakota Jet from North Dakota. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I'm at this is Dakota Jet out of North Dakota. Again, I think I got cut off there. I went on too long. But the other uh, two guys, like I say, if they if they target Watson and get him, that's that's the most important of the three. But can you imagine him paired up with Calvin Austin the third? Uh, you talk about some explosive plays going to happen. I think that kid's going to be a pain in the ass for anybody that has to deal with him. And uh, those two together would be insane uh, a lot of quicks and if they can't get Calvin Austin uh, Sky Moore but there's another one that I think would be outstanding 
later in the draft or wherever they can pick them up. You know, you guys do what you want to do top to bottom. And then get me those two guys. And I would love to see what Watson could do or uh, Wilson would do with those guys. Thanks, Matt. I really enjoy your program and good luck with everything you're up to. Talk to you later, buddy. Bye. Thank you so much for calling in. Very much so. Appreciate it. And uh, sorry you got cut up, uh, cut off on the first one, but um, Christian Watson or Calvin Austin. So Christian Watson, someone who's been a major, major riser for the last few weeks now. I, I mean, he's just an absolute speedster. And this kind of goes off of the last question and like my comments on the last one. Well, there potentially could be some value, like some pretty good value at the wide receiver position. I'm a little apprehensive to say I, that's where I'm going to try to get my value just because of how many times it's burned this team in the past. For every Elijah Moore, which looks like a hit, there's a million Devin Smiths. Looks like where Denzel Mims is going, even though I was super high on Denzel. Uh... Chad Hansen, Ardarius Stewart, Stephen Hill. Um, it worries me a little bit. And sure, like I'm not saying that there's no risk in taking a wide receiver in the first round, but I'm just more confident in those guys than I am in you know the, the swing on Watson or Austin or something like that. Or how about this? Rather take that second and trade for an already established wide receiver who's has a thousand yard season under their belts already. The Jets are at the point now where they don't necessarily have to just be draft, 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 draft. You need to have a more diverse way to build your roster. Yes. Most of the time, your core is going to come from the NFL draft, but you have to supplement your roster with trades and for agency. It can't just be this one way. You can't, Again, I, I use this expression so much, but you can't put the blinders on and just be like, yep, yeah, okay, that's that's it. This is the way that we're going to go, and we're only going to draft. We're going to accumulate a billion picks every year and draft and draft. Like, no. There's no, in, there's no more five- or six-year timelines in the NFL anymore. Teams can turn it around so much faster than that. And the, the odd thing, and it sounds crazy to say this because of how long the Jets missed the playoffs for, there's a ton of parity in the NFL. Like, think about these teams who nobody thought would be any good that made the, the Bengals last year a great example. The Raiders last year weren't supposed to be in a playoff spot, but they were. The 49ers at the start of the year stunk, and they end up making it to the, what, the NFC Championship game? It happens. So you just, you can't, I just hate that you have to be like, this is, there's only one way to build the team. You got to do it the right way. You have to draft 12 people every year until, you know, maybe a decade from now you finally hit. No, no, you, you have all this draft capital to potentially use in a variety of different ways. And I know that's not necessarily what, uh, North Dakota jet is saying here, but it's, it, it's just, it's a tiresome argument or discussion that I feel like I have. I, I see myself having far too often is those who, well, they just don't want, there's only, they only want this one way to do it. So anyway, last one, we're going to go to Matt from Pennsylvania talking about Amari Cooper the wide receiver room, the draft. It's a long one, so we'll get into it right now. Hey, Matt. The Reds from Pennsylvania again. Uh, how you doing, bud? So, I, uh, fresh off the news of Mari getting cut, about to get cut. He's getting cut, right? So, here's my, uh, little thing, and it has to do with free agency. A little bit of a mix of free agency and then draft prospect. So, if, say, we do get I don't know, Amari for, let's say, $12 million, uh, three years, $12 mil. Um, Let's say we have him tied up. And in the draft, we completely disregard, because uh, apparently people are hurling uh, expletives and whatever about Burks. I still think Burks is solid. 
I think Burks is solid. I mean, and, and your combine it doesn't really your your forty time. I mean, come on, it just it doesn't make sense. Um, doesn't stand out at Devontae Adams. It's not really matters. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what I wanted to get to was if say we get our hands on a guy like Amari, maybe we could try to aim for the athletic stud in, in the combine, Christian Watson. That guy's solid. Um, I, I, I watched him. He was a freak of nature. He was, the guy did everything. He's a total athlete. And we know JD and the style are really big on, on athletes. And you can get a guy like that in the second round. That actually would sure up a lot of holes, defensive weapons. We could still draft that Trey McBride kind of tight end, and we don't have to get rid of any assets, even though I'm not against it, but I think it would be a good idea. And also, if we got a guy like that, like Amari, and we draft Watson, would it be reasonable to let go of Burial? I know we're known to not keep our talent, but in all reality, I'm not trying to pay Burials 9 mil. So it's kind of, eh. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. Um, take care, man. Go Jets. Yeah, I appreciate it. And that's an interesting way of looking at it. So I think if you do move on from Braxton Berrios, then yeah, then drafting a player like that or, you know, someone in the second, third round, somewhere in that window, maybe fourth, um, then that would make sense to be your, so you know, your wide receiver four. But I don't think it's going to get that high for Braxton Berrios, which is kind of where I've been, you know, all along through this process. That That just sounds like crazy money. Is he really going to get $9 million on the open market? If he does, God bless him. But you can't bring him back for $9 million to be your fourth wide receiver and punt and kick returner. That's crazy. And, like, that's his role. And he's really good at it. But that doesn't cost $9 million. That costs 5 or $6 million, which is a significant bump up. And that is market value for him. But the, essentially paying 33% more on top of what... Or yeah, right. Because there'd be an extra three. Mil- so I guess more than like like half of what he's worth. Add another three million on top of where he should be the the six million. That's a lot. That's a big difference. But I don't think it gets that. I think you know he ends up probably signing like a three year deal for you know five five and a half million dollars, and you know everyone laughs and says, "Oh, that was funny." Remember when we thought Braxton Barrios was going to get nine million dollars? And if he hits the open market and some fool gives him $9 million, then you say, okay, all right. Then we know what we're going to do. We're going to bring in, you know, uh, Watson We're gonna or Austin or, you know, pick a wide receiver. Probably not in the first round if you're bringing in like Amari, let's say in this instance, but, you know, a day two guy. Then, okay, that's what you do. Or maybe you sign someone on the open market. You know, for in that $5 million range or what you would have paid for uh, or what you allocated for Braxton Barrios and you, you know, do it that way. You could do that. You could find returners elsewhere. And like Barrios is good I, I and he's a fan favorite and I would like to bring him back. I, I'm not saying don't bring him back. In a perfect world, I want him back. But everyone has a price and everyone has a line. If we're talking about $9 million then you can't possibly do it. And there is better value um, in the NFL draft. So that I could agree with you with. So that's it for this episode 107. Thank you so much to everyone who called in. I appreciate it. And, you know, I know the number change was annoying, but I appreciate you guys making the switch over. It's just so much easier on my end to have it set up to this account. So it really means a lot. Uh, If you are new here to this show, Please subscribe, give a rating and review. If you're watching on YouTube, like. If you are listening on either Apple or Spotify or wherever, that's where you can also subscribe. Appreciate you guys as always. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll talk to you next time.